Okay, so I think it's about time we moved on to lighting now to really get this level looking cool. So, the first thing we'll do is deal with the main light source in this scene, which is going to be the sun. And we do that using the light source that's already been included for us when we created this level initially. So if we have a look um, over here, we have a light source. This is our sun. If I just click on it here in the world outliner and press F, it will take us to the icon for it. And if we have a look at the icon, let's just zoom in on it a little bit. You should be able to see that there's an arrow. This white arrow is showing us which way it's currently pointing. And I want to just mess with that a little bit. I want it, the sun to come in from a different angle. And I want it to be lower to look a little bit like it's sunrise or sunset, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to turn my rotate tool on. And I'm going to use the shadows to guide me, I think. So I am just going to zoom out a little bit. I want to be able to see the shadow on here, if there is a shadow. There are no shadows. Where are my shadows? Okay, let's have a look for the shadow in the engine scalability settings. Okay, we'll put high shadows on to make sure that that's going to show up. Okay, so I want the shadows to come in at about that angle, I think, which I'm happy with. And I also want the sun to be a little bit lower, so I'm going to rotate it down a few degrees as well. So I think 20 degrees might be too much, so I'm going to change my snapping to 5 degree increments and just bring it back 5 degrees. I like that, so that gives us some nice long shadows, which is going to kind of simulate the time of day that we're going for. Okay, the next thing I want to do with this light is change the colour of it. So I want to give it a little bit more of an orangey glow. And we can do that in the details panel. So I'm going to click on the light colour. And just from the colour sample here, I'm going to go towards the sort of orange spectrum. I want to be careful not to overdo it. But equally, I want to be able to see, see a bit of colour in the light. So I'm first off just going to choose the colour I want. So I don't want to get it too red. And then I'm just going to pull this slider down. So this would be completely white light, which looks like it did before. And then we can just move that slider to bring the orange in until we get the sort of look that we're going for. So I'm going to choose that. I think that's a, a nice shade of orange. But now the sky sphere, this thing here, doesn't match what we've done here. So the sun is now shining from a completely different direction. So the shadows don't line up and the sky is the wrong color. But luckily, Epic have got us covered. And if we go down in the world outliner to this sky sphere, one of the first options you've got is refresh material. And that will then refresh the material on the sky sphere based on what we've just done in that light. So let's give that a click. Oh, look at that. Now it looks good. So now that's starting to look just beautiful. I could cry. Okay. So we've got that going on, but let's um, let's do a little bit more. So I think I want my sun a little bit lower in the sky, just a touch. So I'm going to go back to my light source. I'm going to rotate it five degrees more. Apparently, I did want that, so we'll go for that. And then let's go back to the sky sphere and we'll update the material again. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. So so far, so good. What I want to do now is change a few things about this sun. So that is that is lovely and low in the sky, isn't it? That is nice. So what we'll do is have a look at the sun brightness. So at the moment, it doesn't really look very bright. And you can change that with this slide mode. We may go back and forth between both this and the directional light to get it right. But I'm just going to drag this up a little bit. You see, if we go really crazy, it's like, ah, my eyes. So we don't want that. But we do want it to look more like it's glowing rather than just a circular disc in the sky. And one thing that I really love doing with this sky that's provided for us is getting a little bit more cloud in there. So you've got this cloud opacity that's set to one and you can turn it all the way up. Um, although if you overdo it, apparently that becomes the sun too. Um, but what I want is just cloud to be able to block out the sun a little bit. Something like that. And I'm also just going to turn up the cloud speed. So let's go for something like 5. So I want this to be a little bit more of a, a windy day. Because as we know we've got the grass and the trees moving. 
So the cloud should be moving too to match that. Okay, so so far so good there. What we'll do next is go back into the directional light and we'll change a few more things here. And what I want to be able to do now is see what the sun looks like as it passes through some trees. So I'm just going to move over towards some trees like that and kind of half hide the sun. And then to make sure that I can see it in game, when I play, I'm going to change to spawn at current camera location like that. And then if we play and we want to test it, it'll spawn us over here rather than at the main spawn point, which is good. So what I want to do is make it look that we've got beams of light shining through the trees, the god rays, and in Unreal Engine that's called, uh, what is that called? Let's just scroll down. Light shafts and light shaft occlusion, etc. So, but before I'll be able to see that, I'm going to need to turn up uh, my settings a little bit. So I think just for the time being, I'm going to go high across the board. And that should allow me to see when I turn this on. So let's turn on light shaft occlusion. I didn't do anything. Light shaft bloom. That's the one. <laughs> Yikes. That is uh, that's very, very bright. So let's turn that down. Let's go 0 0.05. Still too strong. 0 0.005. And that's a bit nice. So let's see what happens now when we go around this tree. You can see that the light is kind of playing with that a little bit. And I'm a fan of it. So it's not, not too strong, but it's there. And that's what I'm going for. So now we've got some God rays going on. This is really starting to come together. Okay, so I think that's pretty much going to tie it up for this step. There is only one more thing that I want to change before I really go any further. And this is the grass. So when we changed our light colour, everything else in the scene kind of went with it. So the ground went a little bit redder. Um, the cabin did, the rocks did. The trees did but the grass still looks too green which i don't like so we need to go into our materials folder and we're going to find the the grass instance that we're using and we're going to adjust the tint so there's the tint and i now know that i want this to be a little bit redder to kind of match up with what else is going on everywhere else so something like that looks pretty nice let's save and close that Let's just hit play and see what we think to this. So the sun may be a little bit overpowering, but overall, I think this is now a vast improvement on what we had previously. So we've made a decent start to lighting. There's now two more places that we need to put lights, and that is just here. We need a light emitting from the fire. And we also need a light that looks like it's coming out of that window as well. So we'll tackle both of those lights in the next step. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.